Good morning, bright and early, y'all from the lat. Now, we got a saying in America, early bird gets a worm. Now that has never been more true in Dalat. These are some early morning people. So if you want that early morning delicious bowl of noodle, you gotta get up early for it. And when you want that delicious bowl of noodles, you come here to Boom Lan. Now, they specialize in their bumba ya, so it's gonna be a bumba, kinda of like a bumba hoy, a little bit different, but with a pork knuckle. They've also got a boom reel, and then what personally brings me back time and time and time again, the mi wang. Now to get to this place, you actually come off of a main road right here. We're next to a pretty big little roundabout since the lat doesn't have any actual traffic lights. And then you get in here and it's, it's a little bit homey, you know, you get some places that are looking a little more like somebody's homes. And then, of course, they are running their business out of, I guess, what is their home technically. But, you know, you get down here, it's quiet, it's relaxed, it's got those true to lap vibes. Um. Now, one of the best parts about here tea they give you. It's so rich with ginger. And it's always hot. And this is it. This is the best view in the house right here. So they got their three broths going. The one for the Boomba, which they sell the most of. As you can tell, it's the biggest. They got the one for the Mi Wang. And then their Boon Rio here in the back. But really what they're most popular for is their Yaw Hill, that pork knuckle any noodle you can get it. So my special order is the Mi Wang Tim Ya Hiel. So that means the Mi Wang with the Ya Hiel added to it. Yeah, boy saying? Chi Kwai home. Sang nay chi rock la bun. Trời ơi, thơm quá. And she's always gonna be working with this, always trying to get that right. You see she's adding that dark, rich, red oil. Wonder if it's like a Yao deal. I'm not too sure what it is she's adding to it, but always gonna be playing with that boom ball. She is an expert here. She's gonna make sure that broth is always perfect. And she's got different bowls for different types of noodles. I know when you get the Mi Wang, you always get this bowl with the white at the bottom. It's got the flowers and the blue little rim. And look at this. I'm telling you, this is such a special bowl of noodles with the Mi Wang. What you get is you get the actual Ya Hiel because we got to add it. But if you wouldn't, you just get the actual Sung piece, the actual pork rib, and then some fatty pork belly, and then all of that mixture that's been chopped up and used to make this broth. And that's it. You gotta get after these. Why it's still hot? Can't let all this go soggy on us. Now I feel like Bumba is the most popular here. I guess everybody has their preferences. Mm -hmm. but Nói chung là tùy khẩu vị của người á. Người nào ăn món này thấy ngon, người nào muốn thấy ngon. Nói chung là tùy mỗi người. It's all about this Mi Wang that brings you back multiple, multiple, multiple times in a week. Now I need to clear something up real quick. This may not look like the Mi Wang you've eaten in other parts of Vietnam, and that's because this is the Da Lat version. Very heavy on the pork. As you see, we have the pork knuckle, the pork bone, and even some pork belly. Has more liquid in it, and then not quite near as much seafood. Now, this broth right here, since it is made with so much more pork, you're gonna get a lot of pork bones. You're gonna get a milky broth with this, and then it's gonna have a sweetness coming from all that daikon radish she adds. And then there's this, this subtle dried out prawn that they're gonna put in here as well that gives it this sweetness. It gives it that little bit of touch of seafood. 
Now it's not my first time doing it, but I will taste it in its purity here. Mm. Let's spice this up how I like it. I'm gonna show you how I eat it now. Now, when you got three types of noodles, you gotta be ready for all different types of situations and they are prepared and ready to go. They got two, four, six, they got six, I think they even got seven different types of condiments you can put with your noodles. From things ranging from mum dum mum brook to two types of chilies, to actually chili oil, to even in this little lemongrass oily mixture. They got it all here. They got you covered. So on the banda, you got a layer on the mumbruk. This is some of the best quality mumbruk you're ever gonna eat in your life. Mm. Okay, finally, we got in our chili oil. We got in a little bit of the lemongrass mixture. I know it's for the boom ball, but I like it, okay? And then you get it in there mixed in with the lettuce is the best bite. Big ol' noodle, touch heaven. Mm -hmm. I just can't even tell you how milky, how warming that is. The earthiness from all the daikon radish, the subtle sweetness coming from the bronze, and then that intense pork belly, fatty pork meat flavor. Not to mention the way she blanches the noodles. They get in here in this broth. They get so soft. They're warm. They're doughy. They just make your eyes close and just transport you to some good places. I mean, to me, these are just some of the best noodles you're ever gonna eat in the world. Look at all that stuff that she pulled from the bottom, that she had to scrape at the bottom and threw in your bowl, clinging to all those noodles. Just every bite is so flavorful. Ooh wee. Mm. Now you can come here every single day because they get all different types of bowls of noodles. And each one of them, you can get the prize piece right here, the pork knuckle. Man. Now for the professional move, just get a little bit of that mumbrook on there. Mm. She's been doing this only five years, but I'll tell you, she's a 30 year vet. It done got busy in here. Ooh, would you look at all the bikes? Where'd everybody come? She'd been open like 15 minutes. And you see, she's full and packed. You gotta get here early if you wanna, you wanna eat here. I guess she opened late till 1, 1.30. But it's real good in the morning. I, I love it, man. It's, it's, can't start your day much better than that. That's right now my favorite bowl of me weighing in all of Vietnam. So come check her out. Give this place some love if you're into that. You can't always just eat, can you? You need to take breaks and get your drink on. So this is my spot. They used to just have this one. They used to be down here. Now they got like three locations all over Dalat because they're so popular. Chatak Rosa, look for it. And no surprise, you got to get the Chatak. You can get the Chat Ataso, which is really good as well. But for me, the Chatak with the Chen Chao with the little tapioca pearls on point. I'm not gonna say this is an everyday thing for me, but 
about 90% of the time in the week that I'm here in Dilat. You gotta get one of these. Now I also wanna mention, she is one of the best employees ever. She will always remember you and she is so freaking friendly. And she makes Chetak like nobody else. You just can't be a perfectly done Chetak. And the most important part about getting a drink in Vietnam, it's not always about the drink, it's about the situation. You're right here on the street, watch traffic go by, and just people watch. You know, just something said for people watching. But just like Vietnam's rainy season, it's raining out of nowhere, so I'm getting out of the rain and uh, heading to the house for a look. I'll meet you at the night where we got something that's uh, very, 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 very special to the lab. So now we're at Quan Su, which is very, very famous for like real things and beef and hot pot and all that. But I'm actually going to get something that's not only special to this restaurant, it's very famous in Dalat, but something that's special to Dalat in itself. And that's the Lao Ataso, or the hot pot with the artichoke. I cannot get over just the decoration in this building. They got the old school photos. I mean, they got Saigon 1972 over here, Hanoi 1942. And then they got the tin roof, which reminds me of my childhood with my dad down in the shop. It's just, it's like old school the lap, but it's got things that remind me of my childhood. And it's even got like these random chandeliers. I just, I love how eclectic it is. So we didn't just get the actual Lao Artiso here, gotta get some barbecue as well. He's actually prepping getting the coals ready. And look what he puts on top of it. It's almost like a a roof shingle. I don't I really don't know what it is. <laughs> like loving the ingeniousness of this, like you pour the oil. You put the bowl right under it, it runs off back into it, and you just do it again and again and again. So we got the ba tu, which is actually gonna be the young beef, the calf itself, so it's gonna be very soft. They've got it in their special marinated mixture, and we got two dipping sauces right here. A muyat san, which is gonna be the sweet condensed milk, chili, like a lime, and a few other ingredients together. And then their actual sula sauce, so the special, and they're not going to tell you what it is. It's like I got to try out the sauce. Special sauce. Ooh. Take all your aromatic ingredients. It's salty, a little bit sweet. Oh, that heat from a fresh chili coming in at the end. Okay, finally got cooked. So what you gotta do is you actually get some lettuce, you gotta get some herb on here, and then you get your cooked pieces. You know, Vietnamese style, we're gonna roll it, and we're gonna get in some sauce. Let's go signature sauce with this. Man, that spice came through. The chef came out here and asked if we like to eat spicy. We said, yes, ma'am, we do, and she brought the heat. Other than that though, that beef is just ultra tender. It's not deep, dark, and rich like you would think, but because they are using it with that calf, it's not gonna be tough at all. And then all those aromatic ingredients, just kind of just the floralness just explodes in your mouth when you eat that. I need to shut up and get back in this. And my fire's just gonna get going more and more, so it's gonna get better and better. She'll try to finish up from the actual grill. Start to bring out the hot pot stuff. I've never eaten this. It's gotta be a type of mushroom. That definitely smells fungi ye 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 ye. However you pronounce it. Okay, And that's your end. Cái này là nước sốt gì? À, nó là chao. Chao. Chao xay. Ừ. Ăn đây cái này rất là hợp. Lion's mane. It looks like a lion's mane. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I feel so stupid when you learn like 
a lot of things are really called things. You're like, oh, it's so obvious. But anyway, so this lao, what you do is you actually don't put the rao in right away. You drink the broth till it's about halfway cooked down, and then we'll start to add all the rao and everything else. So we're supposed to drink the broth first. So let's go ahead and do as we're told. I'm gonna have to cool this down a little bit. You know, I've eaten a lot of beef hot pots. I've eaten a lot of chicken hot pots in the lap, but with that beef, with the mushroom, with the actual artichoke and all those root vegetables, I love this one. I don't know if it's also the way it looks that's just so attractive, but it's perfect for a cold winter night in the lap, the way you get the earthiness, the sweetness, like again, from those root vegetables, the artichoke, and then the beef, not a bone beef broth, but instead coming from meat, so it's still light. It's just got that depth of beef flavor. Delicious. Now I know I just ate a bunch of beef, but look at that right there, barely holding up due to gravity. I don't know if I want to put it in sauce or not. I think I will. Let me tell you something. I thought the beef on the roof, sheiling cooked up, was soft. That makes that look hard, and it was not hard. It was soft, but that was melt in your mouth. All the fat, all the cartilage on that, just ooh, so creamy, so butter-like. And then you get a little bit of the protein. Flavor's on point. Dang. You can kind of pull these little pieces off right here. You can't eat them all, but that meat part's down in there. It's not quite the stem, it's just right above it. And then here, right here, you can just kind of scrape off that meat. All right, now, I kind of start with what I don't know. I hope it's cooked. Everything else kind of is, so I feel like it is too. Oh, oh, one bite. It was a little too hot. It's a very light mushroom. It's very delicate in flavor. It's, I feel like you go for that for the texture. It takes everything in the hot pot and just soaks in all the flavor. I, it's probably called lion's mane or something like that. It should just be called sponge because it soaked in all that flavor, all that juice, and just exploded with that hot liquid in my mouth. Very delicate in flavor though, not a lot coming from it. Instead, it's perfect for throwing in a, some type of hot soup. zero willpower with that because as that broth cooked down more it started to transform it got stronger it started to resemble pho I could taste the warming spices more like the cardamom the star anise the cinnamon and all of those spices it was delicious even though I got more full the flavors got stronger and more bold and you just can't stop this place definitely for me had the best one-two punch with the actual grill in the Lao or the hot pot being together so hopefully if you're into that you'll come and check them out but y'all, it's gonna do it for me for this video. It's Max, catch you the next one. Peace.